Deuteronomy chapter 23. Deuteronomy chapter 23. How many glad you saved this morning? Amen. How many glad you go to a Bible-believing church? Amen. Yeah, glory. All right. Yeah, all right. Let's all stand for just a moment. Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse number 12. Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse number 12. This is going to be one of the more unusual messages, or one of the most unusual messages I've ever preached. And uh, yeah. Okay. Well, just turn the, turn the gray down. Turn all of them down except for the gray, actually. All right. Praise the Lord. The sound system. I, I swear, so I think we need to have an exorcism on it. <laughs> test, test. All of them except for the gray. The one with a little gray tab on it. All right, well, maybe we, maybe we got them swapped up. Maybe that's why. All right. That's good right there. Perfect. Okay. So after the service, we have the baptism. We're going to take some of this holy water back here, sprinkle it on the sound system. <laughs> All right, look at Deuteronomy chapter 4. This is going to be uh, one of the most unusual messages I've ever preached. And uh, for you, those of you who have been around since the beginning of, of me starting this church, I've preached some pretty weird ones. Amen, Josh? So Josh has been around for some weird ones. And uh, but this is going to be a weird one, but it's going to be one that I think is going to help us. All right, notice Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse number 12. The Bible says here, Thou shalt have a place also without the camp, whither thou shalt go forth abroad. And thou shalt have a paddle upon thy weapon, and it shall be when thou wilt ease thyself abroad. That means whenever you need to use the restroom. Thou shalt dig therewith, and shalt turn back, and cover that which cometh from thee. For the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of thy camp to deliver thee, and to give up thine enemies before thee. Therefore shall thy camp be holy, that he see no unclean thing in thee, and turn away from thee. I want to preach to you a message. Now, if you don't understand what's going on, God said when you need to use the restroom, go outside the camp, dig a hole, do your business, cover it back up, and, and, and that's that. And the reason why is because he doesn't want the camp to become unclean. So I'm going to preach to you a message this morning entitled, Bury It, Don't Carry It. Bury it, don't carry it. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you, Lord, for letting us be in church this morning. God, I pray that you help me now as I try to preach. Lord, I pray that you fill up the Holy Ghost. Father, I pray that you would do something in our midst. Hide it behind the cross. Give me exactly what I need to say. And Father, I pray that something that would be said in this message would impact somebody, Lord. We love you and thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. All right, everybody alive this morning? Somebody say amen real quick. Amen. All right, wonderful. Now I want you to notice here. In this text, Deuteronomy is uh, technically the second giving of the law. The Jews are about to go into the land of Canaan. And so right before they go into the land of Canaan, God said, I'm going to recap some things. We're going to go over some things that we have already had. And we're also going to add a few more things. And one of the various laws, there's all sorts of different kinds of laws. And some of them seemingly make a lot of good sense. Like, for example, this one makes pretty good sense, right? Uh, when you need to use the bathroom, let's just make sure you're not doing it wherever you want to, amen? So th but then there's others that don't make good sense. So in this, all these laws, like thou shalt not see the kid in its own mother's milk. That means you're not supposed to take a goat, a kid goat, and boil it in its own, you're not supposed to cook that kid in its own mother's milk. Well, that's one of the weirdest laws I've ever heard in my life. What in the world? And I'm sure there's some things you could dig out about it. But notice, there are some laws you just kind of scratch your head and say, okay, that, well, that's a weird one, but okay, Lord, you always know what's best. And then there's some that just make good sense. To me this morning, this law makes pretty good sense. Wouldn't you agree with that? Yes. I mean, go down, uh, go down to San Francisco or L.A. Right. and see all the homeless population. And, and you know what problem they're having over there? They're having a problem with people using the sidewalks as bathrooms. And in case you're not aware, that is a huge public health problem, right? So now notice, I want you to notice a few things about this law, about bury it, don't carry it. Number one, I want you to notice the camp, the place where the children of Israel were commanded to live. God said that this camp was to be holy. 
It was to be habitable. It was supposed to be a place where people could enjoy living there without having to worry about watching where they stand. Let me say this this morning. Our homes and our church and our lives ought to be places where people don't have to worry about where they're going to stand. Amen. Yeah. Uh, dogs are fine. I'm, I'm not a huge dog person. I used to be a big dog person. I used to love dogs, but uh, now, you know, I, I've turned into a little bit of a cat person. Don't hold that against me, but we've got two cats, and I, and I like, I love those cats. I really do. I, I just love them to death. But think about a dog. You know what I love about a cat? A cat doesn't even have to be trained. You just you set out a litter box, and that cat goes to the litter box. But a dog, man, a dog will use the bathroom anywhere and everywhere. Doesn't matter. And even when they're house trained, sometimes they still have accidents, you know, like it's a child or something. I'm going to tell you what, I can't stand going over to somebody's house, and there you just walk through, uh, just come on through the yard. Watch where you step, though. <laughs> I mean, I can't stand it, man. It just drives me nuts. And so notice, God said, when you need to use the restroom, when you need to relieve yourself, make sure you're taking that outside the camp. That is not something that needs to be done in the camp. Why? Because what happens is, is it begins to build up, and it begins to decay, and it begins to infect everything around it. Do you know, in fact, during the, well, I was reading this, during World War uh, I and the Civil War, there were more people that died from poor living conditions inside the trenches and inside the camps than there was in actual combat. Right. In fact, more people died in the Civil War and World War I from dysentery than they did from bullets or bombs or, or machine guns. Why? Because they weren't properly taking care of the waste that was coming from them. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. You ever been inside a home and, I mean, just bless their heart, but you ever been inside a home, maybe somebody that's elderly, and just you can just tell that things haven't been cleaned and taken care of, and it just, I mean, just the filth and the mess. Understand, those places are almost inhabitable, and you go, I knew a guy growing up, bless his heart, his parents were older, much older, and uh, and, and they just couldn't clean and do like they should have, and you could walk into the house, the house would smell moldy. It was kind of clean, but you could tell it never had a really deep clean, and this young man was sick all the time growing up, all the time. Guess what happened? He moved out south, and he moved out of that house, and guess what happened to all his health problems that he had? They cleared up pretty quick. You say, why? Because of the conditions he was living in. I want you to hear me. God said, I want that camp to be holy. I do not want you to be taking care of business inside the camp. When business needs to be taken care of, go outside because if you just do whatever you want to, go to the restroom wherever you want to, it is going to create a public health crisis. I'm going to tell you what, we are living in public health crisis all across this nation in our homes. Amen. Families and homes and churches have become public health crises. When you can have a church that gets up, and just recently I saw a video, a church that gets up and starts referring to God in gender-neutral pronouns. That is a public health crisis. Amen. Yeah. When you've got churches that are allowing women to get up and teach and preach, and these women come along, they've got blue jeans on, so tight lips. You can, I mean, listen, if they had a quarter in their back pocket, you could read what day it was men at all, Amen. And you've got these men that come up with their long curly hair and their necklaces and all, you know, all the stuff and look like queers up there behind the pulpit. That is a public health crisis. Amen. Right. When you've got mamas and daddies that lay drunk and, 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 and have all sorts of people in their house that are cussing and, and drinking and, and doing drugs and, I mean, just rapping and never know if daddy's going to, you know, come in beating all that. I mean, when you've got that, that is a public health crisis. Yes. Understand that we are living in a generation where everybody, can I just be real blunt with you this morning? Everybody's just using the bathroom wherever they want to. It's a free-for-all. We're living in the days. What's the last verse of the book of Judges? And every man did that which was right in his what? Own eyes. Own eyes. Right. So number one, we see the camp. Now, all my points this morning start with the letter C. 
I'm not going to say the word of my next point, but it's a C word that describes that which comes from you. You can fill in the blank, amen? For sake of my wife this morning, I said I wouldn't say that word. So notice, not only do you see the camp, but then you see that which comes from you. Can I say this this morning? Now you say, preacher, this is a little bit weird to be talking about behind the pulpit. This is Bible right here. God said that there's a law. God put this in the law. And listen, the things which were written beforehand were written for our what? Learning. There's some principles we can learn. Notice, I want you to notice that, number one, everybody produces waste. Everybody. You know, the leader of, uh, of North Korea, Kim Jong-un, you know that he tells his people that he doesn't use the bathroom because he works so hard and so efficiently that the, that the food just literally burns within his own stomach. You don't even produce waste. Now, I'm not sure if there's anybody in North Korea that believes that, but, I mean, you've got to assume that your people are pretty stupid to think, yeah, I don't use the bathroom. Everybody, I, listen, you can eat the clean, I mean, you can eat green vegetables and fruits and take all your vitamins and I mean eat the cleanest you could ever possibly eat and guess what you still want to do you're still going to produce some waste why because that's just how the human body in its natural state works so can I say this this morning to you Christian you can live good you can live clean you can read your bible you can go to church you can pray you can do everything you're supposed to do and at the end of the day guess what you're still going to produce sometimes <laughs> <laughs> is, everybody, is everybody on the same page, right? You can try to live the best you can live, but you're still, every single day, you're still going to produce some waste. Right. Can I say this? Look at Mark chapter 7. Look over at Mark chapter number 7. Mark chapter 7 this morning. Mark chapter number 7. I don't know if you'll hear the kind of message this. I don't know if you'll hear this message preached at First Baptist Church this morning down in Nashville. But uh, I don't, I, how, how many of you ever heard a sermon preached on this before? No, wonderful. I've heard one sermon preached on it. All right, now notice Mark chapter number seven. Notice what it says in verse fourteen. And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, "Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand: there is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him." But the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. So notice Jesus said, things going into you cannot defile you. So in verse 17, when he was entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. And he saith unto them, are ye so without understanding also? Do ye not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entereth into the man, it cannot defile him? Watch verse number 19. Why? Why does the things outside not defile the inside? Because it entereth not into his heart, but into the belly, and goeth out into the draw, purging all meats. Jesus basically said those things that are without, that come in, guess what? They go down into the stomach, and they go out into the draw. You purge all the meats. If what goes in comes out. Right? Notice what the Lord says. That which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. Did you notice that? Notice Listen, you can sit there and watch all the filth. You say, preacher, how does a man become so wicked? How does the, how does the stuff that comes out of that man, you know, you think of evil people, or maybe there's somebody in your life who's just a wicked person, and you sit there and think, man, I mean, did they watch a bunch of pornography? Did they, did they you know, uh, drink a bunch? Did they do so many drugs that it fried their brain? What, what did they do? What, what went into them that made them that way? Newsflash, I'm going to surprise some of you. Absolutely nothing. Everybody following me? You say, why? Because all that stuff, murder, thefts, covetousness, uh, adulteries, fornication, evil thoughts, all that stuff, that doesn't have to come from without. That comes from right here, man. Amen. 
Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful right. above all right. things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Oh, well, you just need to follow your heart. No, you don't either. Well, just follow your dreams. You know the Bible talks about <laughs> filthy dreamers in the book of Jude? You don't need to follow your dreams. You don't need to follow your heart. You don't need to just live out your ambitions. You need to get your face in the book and find out God's will for your life and live according to how the Bible wants you to live. Amen. Amen. You say, well, how does somebody become that wicked? I'm going to tell you how, they're, how they become that wicked. They're born that way. You're born that way. I'm born that way. Talk about that last Sunday. So now notice, you say, preacher, I'm trying to live clean. I'm trying to do right. I'm trying to live for the Lord. And yet, sometimes I've still got to go to the bathroom. Sometimes there's still things that come out of me that just absolutely are terrible. Yep, join the club. You're never going to get rid of that until you get out of this human body. Talked about it last week. You're going to struggle with the sins of the flesh. So understand, the waste is not the problem. The fact that you've got to spiritually use it like, well, my goodness, I mean, I, I'm trying to do all these things right, and yet still those thoughts pop into my head, and still those words sometimes slip out of my mouth, and sometimes I still find myself with envy or deceit or lust. I still struggle with those sins. Preacher, I must be a terrible person. No, 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 no. God said you're going to have some waste. There's going to be some things that, that's going to come out of you, and you're going to say, where did that come from? Am I right? I mean, maybe, 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 maybe you don't struggle with sin like I do. Maybe, maybe, maybe some of you need to be pastor, amen? I mean, I still struggle with the flesh every day of my life. So God said it's not a matter of if you have the waste. It's a matter of when you have the waste, what you do with it. Yeah, amen. Amen. There you go. See, see, the issue is not if you got waste. The issue is what you do in it when it happens. What you do with it. Now notice, what did God tell him? He said over there in verse number 13. Go back to Deuteronomy 23, 13. Notice what it said. It said, and thou shalt have a paddle upon thy weapon, and it shall be when thou... Now a paddle is like a, a, a little trick and show Little show. Have you ever seen army issue stuff and they've got their weapon and stuff? They've got a little. They've got a little spade, like a little hand shovel. You know what that's for? Well, that's for a plethora of things. And one of the things that it's for is whenever you need to use the restroom, you dig a hole and you do your business and cover it back up. God said, "When you got to do that, go outside the camp." Number one. I've never in my life understood this. Now I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna preach here for a second, so you just get ready to get good, mad, uh, good, and mad, and offended, and all that kind of stuff. I have never understood these Christians that'll start dabbling in sin and then want to plaster it all over social media. <laughs> Facebook has listen. I'm off of it. I don't get back. On, I, I'm never gonna get back on it. I'm never gonna start posting and liking and sharing. I'm never doing that stuff again. You say why? Because absolutely no good came from it. You say, why? Because all it is, it gives people the ability. Listen, used to, if you were stupid, you had to go out of your way to make sure people knew about it. But now all you got to do is post on Facebook. Am I right? Amen. And you get these Christians that will get on there. I mean, I've seen, I've seen women get on there and start talking about all the problems they're having with their husbands. That's the dumbest thing on planet Earth. Well, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna let everybody know that you know I'm with somebody, and I know you know people are gonna say that this is wrong and it's adultery, but I just love him so much, and me and my husband were working out. Da, 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 da. Thank you for telling everybody that you're an adulteress. But they'll get on there on Facebook and do that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's true. If you've got waste in your life, you know where you need to take that. Take it without the camp. You ain't gotta air out your dirty laundry to everybody. Yeah. yeah. I get I get so sick of Christians, man. They'll, something will happen and they'll go and tell everybody and they'll try to air it out. And they'll, listen, you know the Bible says that love covereth the multitude of sin? Well, bless God, if you're looking at stuff on the internet you shouldn't look at, I hope everybody finds out about it. I don't. I hope it stays without the camp. I don't want that junk in here. Amen. Yeah. Well, bless God, if you're doing things you shouldn't be doing with somebody, I hope you get I hope God exposes you know, God is not interested in exposing people. I get sick of these 
preachers that act like it's their job to expose everybody's sin. But you start talking about their sin, well, they get real private all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. I've never been one to get up and try to expose everybody. And by the way, when somebody comes to me, if I counsel somebody and somebody says I'm struggling with A, B, and C, I don't even preach on that subject matter for the next three or four weeks. Why? Because I don't want people to think that I'm trying to get up and air out anybody's dirty laundry. What God's interested is for you to get that thing right, for you to go outside, bury it, cover it up, and forget it ever existed. Amen? Amen? Amen. But see, we've gotten in our, our independent Baptist way, and I'm an independent Baptist to the core. I mean, I'm King James only, Bible believing. I believe in dressing right, spitting white, the whole nine yards. Amen? Amen. Don't get nervous. <laughs> Listen, if the brethren wouldn't crucify me, I'd chew Levi Garrett right now. Amen? <laughs> but now notice these preachers, we get in our independent Baptist world. Well, bless God, we just need to expose everybody. Nobody's safe in my church. Well, that's probably why nobody wants to be there. <laughs> Well, nobody's safe from my prayer. Listen, if I'm preaching and the arrows are just falling and it hits you in the heart, know that I'm not up here trying to single you out. I'm just preaching, and that's probably the Holy Ghost laying that arrow in your heart. But understand, if you're doing something you're not supposed to be doing, you know what I want you to do? I don't want you to get exposed. I don't want everybody to find out. I don't want there to be this big thing where you get, you know, oh, no. I want you to just take it outside the camp. Come down here to the altar. Spiritually take it outside the camp. Dig the hole. Do what you got to do. Cover it up and move on for the Lord. Amen. Right. Yeah. right. So you see the camp. You see the waste. And you see the covering. The worst thing you can do, listen to me, folks, the worst thing you can do is sit in your own field. It's the worst thing you can do is sit there in your own field and sit there and let all that stuff build up around you. God said, take it outside the camp and deal with it. You know what some of you have done this morning? You have gotten, and I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, man, I'm going to preach this morning. You, some of you have gotten so used to sitting in your own field, you don't even realize. You, you, ever, you ever notice the people that stink don't realize they stink? Right. I'm going to be honest. I was in the DMV. It was sometime last year. I was doing something in the DMV. And I was, uh, I think I may have been trying to get a new license or something. and uh, Or maybe it was the license plate, uh, tag off. I think it was the tag off. I was doing something with the tag. I can't even remember. And I go in there, and there is a woman. She was a woman. Um, it, she wasn't a woman trying to be a man, uh, but she was, she was a woman. But she was <clears throat> artistic, if you catch my drift. You could tell this woman uh, didn't care much about personal hygiene. She had the nose rings, and you know, half of her hair was shaved off and all that kind of stuff. And uh, she was wearing a sleeveless shirt, and it was quite obvious that she did not groom under her armpits. You say, why? Because she went up to the counter like this, and I was standing behind her. And I'm just, I'm, folks... She smelt terrible. I know she hadn't bathed. And I think everybody in that DMV, the guy that was that was helping her was standing there, and I could see he was going like this. Every time she looked where it is, he was going, you could smell her throughout the whole thing. But you know, the problem is that she probably didn't know she stunk. Why? Because she was used to the scent of her own armpits or whatever. You ever notice how people, you walk into somebody's house, you say, smells funny in here. And they say, I don't smell anything. Yeah. Yeah. You know why? Because they're used to it. You know what I'm afraid some Christians have gotten into? They've gotten into the fact that they don't think there's anything wrong because they can't even recognize the stench of their own filth that they've built up around them. Am I making sense to everybody? You've become nose blind. It's what they call it, called being nose blind. You've become nose blind to the fact that you've got all this filth around you and you're not dealing with it. And if you don't deal with it, you're going to get dysentery, you're going to get an infection, there's going to be some of the pathogens, or if you're not the one getting sick, people who try to be around you are going to get sick. Now listen to me, I'm almost done this morning. We see the camp, we see the waste, we see the covering, but then we see the call. Why, why did God, I'm almost done, why did God give us this law? You know why God gave us this law? Look at verse 14. For the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of thy camp 
to deliver thee and to give up thine enemies before thee. Therefore shall thy camp be holy, that he see no unclean thing in thee, and turn away from thee. <coughs> you know what Revelation 1, John said he saw? John said he saw the Lord Jesus Christ walking in the midst of the what? The candlesticks. What are the candlesticks? Churches. The churches. Now, if you're saved here, do you have the Holy Ghost living inside of you? Yes, sir. Yeah, so understand Jesus Christ is here. But I want you to hear me this morning. As Jesus is walking in the midst of the church, the Bible says here that if he sees something that is refused and defiled, you know what it says he does? He turns away. Let me ask you a question. You say, Preacher, I feel like God's not been near me lately. Okay. Could it be that you've got a bunch of filth in your life and he's not? That's what it says. It says that he see no unclean thing in thee and turn away from thee. Well, I just don't feel like God's speaking to me in the services anymore. I had a, I had a lady one time who said she left here because she couldn't feel God here anymore. Now, you'll never believe this. You know, she found a... She, she left here and found another good Bible-believing, rightly dividing, King James-only Baptist church to go to. No, that ain't what happened. She didn't go to church anymore. You know why? Because it wasn't the fact that she wasn't feeling God. It was the fact she had so much filth in her life. God looked at her and said, yeah, honey, until you clean up, I'm, I'm turning away. I don't want our church to be a church where God turns away because we've got so much filth in our lives. That's right. Right. I don't want to be a church well, where God can't walk in amongst us because we have so many Christians that have filth building up around them and they won't take care of business. I don't want to be a preacher where God can't use me because I've got so much stuff built up around me and I've got so much filth and says, yeah, boy, I would use you, but I'm not going to get within a 10 mile radius of you because of how you stink. Notice the cause that God gave this law was so that he could be with his people. You say, preacher, I just want to, I just want to feel God. I just want to, I just want to have a relationship. I want that relationship to be rekindled like I used to have it. Okay, I'm going to tell you exactly how to get it. You need to take that shovel off of your waist. Right? See, that shovel is right there beside the sword. Sometimes you need a sword. Sometimes you need a shovel. You need to take that shovel off of your uh, gear pack there. You need to march out a little bit outside the camp. You need to dig a hole, and you need to start shoveling that stuff in and say, I'm bearing it all. I'm giving it all to you. I'm going to cover it up, and I'm going to go back to the camp with a clean conscience and a clean heart. Good. I'm going back now. to a clean camp so that God can meet with me once more. Amen. Yeah. I got to thinking about this. Notice one of the things that he says. He says to deliver, uh, to, uh, to give up thine enemies before thee. You say, preacher, I've got some battles in my life that seem that I'm losing. Okay, let me ask you a question. Are you as clean as you possibly can be between you and the Lord? In fact, we're having our meeting tomorrow. What's one thing I always say at the begin when we have an altar call at the beginning of our meeting? What do I always say? Let's all come up and get as clean as possible. That's right. Let's all come up and let's just get clean. Maybe let's not wait for tomorrow night to do that. Maybe this morning. Why don't we just get clean this morning? Well, you know, preacher, I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah, as long as you're okay, see, your nose blind. I wonder this morning how many people need to get in this altar and say, I've got some things to get cleaned up. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Brother Dan's coming back to the piano. Will everybody be anybody in here?